Hello, my name's Steve Dale. Um, this is a brief video cast uh, that Patricia Alvarez asked me to do in relation to the work that I'm doing on communities of practice, and I believe it's specifically for um, the courses that she runs in relation to the Video Resource Centre. Um, Patricia asked me to cover four key things. Um, a brief background of my work and experience. Um, whether uh, VRCs created by students are considered as online communities. Uh, a little bit about successful, what I consider to be successful communities of practice, collaborative practices. And um, since these are short-term projects that um, that you're doing, um, what uh, we could do to make them into longer-term online um, communities and uh, online resources. So uh, just taking those, I'm going to try and keep this brief and I'm going to try and do this in one take. Um, my background and experience, um, for 25 years or more I've um, been involved in information and knowledge management, probably for the past 10 years primarily on knowledge management which is really the um, human behaviours, the softer side of um, collaborative for learning and sharing, um, and in particular uh, creating communities of practice. And um, I think I've actually been involved with uh, communities of one sort or another for at least 10 years, um, perhaps long before they became uh, popular through the works of people like Etienne Wenger. My first experience was on things like the CIX bulletin boards. But I think more recently than that, so if I take us to 2005, which is probably the, um, the major, most, uh, the largest project I've been involved in, was the community of practice for UK local government. Um, that was started in 2005, um, and it now has over 80,000 members from uh, various councils across the UK, which is, that's is Scotland, England and Wales, and around about 1,500 communities. And I think um, the, the skills that I bring to this really is this blend between understanding how technology can be used by people to uh, support and enhance their um, online collaboration and to support and uh, encourage collaboration and, and knowledge sharing. So that, that's that's a bit about the background. Um, the, the second point what the Patricia wanted me to cover is about uh, you know how I consider VCR uh, video resource centres uh, which are created by students, whether they're considered to be online communities. Um, I think we can perhaps get ourselves tied up too much in definitions for uh, online communities. I mean, we talk about communities of interest and communities of learning, communities of practice. But I think in all sense, with regard to these virtual communities, they are places where people to go to uh, collaborate, to share knowledge. And perhaps one of the most important things is to um, establish a, a place where there is trust, where people are quite willing to share what they know um, and, and have a good blend of experts and those who uh, want to learn. And we all have something of use to other people and uh, it's one of those things that you you don't really know the value of what you know until you share it. So for me, uh, whether we talk about virtual uh, communities of interest or learning or practice, um, a virtual community is an online environment where people can share something about themselves and share their knowledge and be part of a, of a trusted online community. Um, so in that sense, I think that uh, the virtual resource centres are um, a type of uh, online community. I think the next thing that Patricia mentioned was, you know, what, what are successful collaborative practices? The, the 1,500 communities I referred to earlier uh, across local government, um, I'll be the first to admit that not all successfully collaborating, um, but there's a good few that are. I think one of the key 
aspects of of the good communities, those communities that are working very well, that are collaborating, sharing knowledge. They've got a common denominator and that is good facilitation or moderation or community management. And this usually involves one or two people almost as a dedicated resource helping that community, uh, helping the people in that community to share, um, bringing new members in, uh, ensuring that uh, questions get answered um, and even down to perhaps job doing some of the more administrative tasks such as ensuring that content is up to date, that old content is removed, um, which a lot of people refer to as feeding and weeding, just making sure that the community stays vibrant and alive. So um, successful communities, I think, are, are dependent quite a lot on having somebody there that's actually going to help that community fulfill its objectives and fulfill its needs. And in terms of you know good collaborative practice, I think just recognising that there's lots of different people, different skills there. Um, one way of actually getting people engaged is to start off with you know simple questions in the forum, you know asking people to introduce themselves, to say a little bit about themselves. And these are usually things that can't be challenged. But one thing that um, worries a lot of people when they're actually engaging in an online environment is if somebody come going to come back and tell me that I'm wrong, that I'm saying something that's silly or incorrect. And they can't really say that if in actual fact it's something about you, it's about your personal life, only you know that. But it is no doubt difficult, you know, getting establishing that trust. Um, and one good way of starting any community is actually having face-to-face -face meetings so that people can establish that eye-to-eye uh, -eye contact and um, establish some degree of trust. It's very difficult to build communities completely in isolation from, um, you know, f uh, physical contact wherever possible. If there is a sense of getting people together, and I'm not saying that you can't build communities in a uh, truly virtual sense, i.e., that people never meet because of perhaps being geographically diverse. And in those senses, then you really do need a very good and active community facilitator to try and bring these people together. And the last point that Patricia mentioned was, you know, how we can perhaps encourage um, some of the short-term uh, virtual resource centre projects to become longer term. And I think the key to this is just ensuring that the content is fresh. Um, I think there's nothing worse than going to an online resource or website or wherever and finding that it hasn't been updated for six months, which, which would tend to indicate that there is uh, the community is not alive, that the website is not alive, that people don't care about it, and it's infrequently visited. So keeping content fresh and alive, I think, is a way of keeping um, people coming back to that community. And one way of doing that is by you know introducing a a, um, a blog feed or a, a Twitter feed into the site so that you know updates can be regularly sent to the site. Uh, and just ensuring that you know new knowledge assets are put onto the site on a regular basis. The perception is that if you know you're pulling down content which is six months or more uh, old, that perhaps it's no longer relevant. We live in a very dynamic and fast-changing world, so it's important really to ensure that content that we're putting onto these um, virtual communities is fresh and relevant. So I hope that's. That's sufficient for now. I know this is fairly short, but deliberately so. Um, you don't want to hear a long video cast, but I'm quite happy to to do another one. Um, you know, on a particular aspect of maybe one of the communities that um, we're running here in the UK, and some specifics about that community. But for the time being, um, I, I sincerely hope that it's a successful course that uh, Patricia is running. Um, so I wish uh, Patricia well and. Um, I wish also uh, well to all of the students on this course and um, good luck in your studies. Okay, bye for now.